Hello everyone, today is a special day because we have the Phantom 2.0 52 volt beta production with us. So as we usually do, we're gonna compare it to the second prototype we had, starting from the back and walking our way up to the top. So first thing you can notice right off the bat is this one has this brake at the back. A lot of you have been requesting it and saying that you prefer this brake versus drum brake. So we decided to finally do it and put this brake on this bad boy. You can see the discs are really thick. Um, they are 2.3 millimeter and usually on a scooter it's 1.7. If I take it and try to shake it left to right, and see, it's not budging at all. It's rock solid. So if you hit a curb or even during shipping, when we ship the scooter to you, it's never gonna get bent. After that, we have the fender, pretty standard. And we have our new suspension at the back. All the prototype we've made in the past were hydraulic suspension, and it's still gonna be hydraulic, but on the stellar edition, the 60 volt edition. On the 52 volt, it's a non-hydraulic suspension, and we had to do something pretty custom to have 3,000 pounds here, which is a lot compared to what you usually have on scooter. Um, and this was really the sweet spot to have something stiff enough like we want it to be, like that's gonna bounce well, uh, but not too loose as well. So this one feels phenomenal, in my opinion, even better than the hydraulic one. I think the hydraulic one on the 60 volt is gonna be for a heavier rider. Um, and keep in mind, you can always put this one on the 60 volt or you can put the hydraulic one on this one. It's all retro compatible. And same thing for the brakes. You can fit hydraulic brakes here. The same one that you're gonna find on the Stellar Edition. If we continue, we have our beautiful light diffuser. We improved the diffuser on this version and we made the light a bit more blue. Uh, so it's not uh, as blinding as it was before, but still extremely bright. And we refined the red color at the back. Still some improvement to be done with the rear light. I think we can do something better, a bit brighter, uh, and for the turning signal. Uh, but with the diffuser overall, it looks beautiful. The waterproofness of it is way better. The other thing you can notice at the back is the tag that we put on it. Here it says foundation, one of 500, just like the hoodie I'm wearing now. And this is gonna be for all the 500 first pieces that are gonna be produced. It's gonna be the first 500 of the 52 and the first 500 of the 60 volt. Uh, and they all gonna be labeled one of 500. And if you did pre-order the scooter, it's gonna come with this hoodie as well and other extra perks. Then if we continue, we have the neck of the scooter. We use the occasion to open the mold to reinforce it inside. There's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be thicker here. Not because there was any weakness, it's just we had some room in the mold to do it, so we did it. Uh, we have the charging port, which is the same as before. And then we get to the front. So same thing, we have the disc brake, easy plug connector. One thing you can notice as well is all those holes for the caliper. You know, we pre-drilled it because we're trying some semi-hydraulic caliper they're not worth it. So we're gonna be removing the extra hole here for the final production. Then we have the spring suspension, same one that is present at the back, and we have those tires. So we see on the V2, we had flat tires, street tires that we're gonna keep for the 60 volt, but for the 52, we wanted something like semi-hybrid tires, which are those ones. So we have a nice pattern of a thread uh, pointing in one direction as well. So it's still gonna offer great grip to the ground uh, and allow you to go uh, a little bit off-road uh, while being really comfortable on road as well. Then we go up, we still have the same holes that we had on the V2 for mounting the steering dampener. Again, this bracket is mounted in, it's not built in. So here we have the holes to accommodate this bracket and we refine the geometry of the direction stopper to be perfect with the dampener because on a lot of scooters, the dampener are uh, an afterthought. And you know, it's gonna lock left and right. When I turn it here, you want it to lock with the direction stopper built in and not the actual dampener that's gonna reach the maximum course. So this one was refined to do exactly this. And the direction stopper we added is rock solid. It's built in the swing arm and the neck. It's one of the strongest part of the whole scooter. It's a direction stopper. Anyway, there was a couple manufacturing challenge that came with it that this is just stronger, cheaper, better, and it's never, it doesn't require anything on the direction tube itself. So it's a win-win-win situation. Win, win, win. Then we get to one of the most important parts, which is the folding mechanism. And this one you can see looks completely different from the V2. The V2 is the same as the Apollo Pro, the Apollo Go, the Apollo City, and the Apollo Air. This folding mechanism is great, but we wanted to integrate a second type of safety that is completely independent from the latch. Because you can see the strap here, it's to hold the latch down in case the orange button fell. So pretty straightforward. If we don't have this, the orange button fell, uh, it could open on you, right? 
But what about if it's the hook that fell or the big bolt that fell, but there is nothing else keeping it shut, uh, which is where this new part comes into play. So now you have the rubber strap. So you remove the rubber strap in case the orange button fell. If the orange button fell or the hook fell or anything else fell on the scooter, well, it's still locked because you have this extra safety here, which is a simple holder made of steel that's gonna clip on the bolt. Even if you shake it like crazy, it's never gonna open. You need to flip this open. Um, and there's a magnet inside built in, and that's why it stays like this, a strong magnet. So really happy about this new folding mechanism. And we also added um, an adjustment here. So we added an adjustment here that's gonna allow all of you to adjust how high the orange button sits. So it's a screw that if you tighten it, it's gonna push on the orange button to decide where it's gonna sit inside the hole to always make sure that it clips properly. The beautiful thing about this folding mechanism is that it's retro compatible with all our models. So that's what we have for the folding mechanism so far. Let us know down in the comment below what you think about it. If we continue up, we have the stem light, which now looks beautiful, the diffuser. And the other thing that you can see is the way the stem is made. So on the bit of production, the inner structure of the stem was reinforced and taking into consideration channels for the light, for the brake cable, for everything. Like, it's really well taught uh, versus this one that was just uh, hollow inside. So it's just way stronger and it looks the same. Again, we like that, it's lovely. And we finally get to the headset where there's a lot of difference. First off, the headlight. So you can see on this one, we tried a big headlight and before that it was an integrated headlight like the Apollo Pro. Right now we have a different type of headlight, which is smaller, require less current, but is brighter than this one. And it's also just smaller. Like aesthetically, this one looks better. In the front, we have the same thing here. And then we have our brake handles, which are the same as a drum brake one. We love them because you have the belt built in. Then looking at the back, we see we have the new display, the dot two display that we change internally, a lot of things in it that we're gonna walk you through it. We have the new turning signal that finally, if you drop the scooter, it's not gonna break, it's gonna land on the plastic here and not on the actual casing of the turning signal uh, like all our other scooters. You can see that the latch is also way longer and this is because we had to make the body longer. Why? to offer you more room for your feet. It was one of the feedback for this one, but also to be able to fit a bigger battery for the Stellar version, which is 60 volt, 30 AH, versus this one, which is 52 volt, 27 AH. For the dot two display, we added silicone inside to be able to seal it completely. So it's already waterproof, way better than what we had even on the Pro before. But now, even if you dip this whole thing into water, the top plate, it's fully waterproof. Uh, we added Apple Find My as well. So the difference between this one and this one is this is a single stack PCB. The display, it's just a PCB and the, the display on top. This one to fit Apple Find My, fit a external battery in case the scooter die and you still want to track it. We had to do a double layer of PCB. So it's like a sandwich PCB mounted like this and all of this is then put into silicone or epoxy to uh, really waterproof it. Then we have the turning signal, obviously easy plug connector inside if you want to replace it to make it convenient. We have the quad lock holder as well. Again, on this unit, it's not gonna be wireless charging. What is very interesting compared to this one is we were able to add NFC. On this unit, you can see there's a NFC patch located there. This is where the coil was supposed to be, but as you might have seen in our last video from China that you can go check out here, we added the NFC inside the quad lock. So now we don't need a patch like this. It's better for manufacturing, waterproofing, uh, and it also just works straight up better. And now the NFC works flawlessly. You can lock and unlock the scooter with the NFC and you can lock it with the app, unlock it with the NFC or vice versa, and it works really well. And then we have the actual performance of the scooter. So we were able to increase it a little bit from this one because the motor are the same technology inside as the Stellar motor. All the motors we did with lines on the casing like this are the more powerful version of our motors. It's the same thing we did for the Pro 60 volt uh, prototype we did before. So the top speed is really fast on this one for 52 volt and the range is also fantastic. The other thing that you can't see is the wire management inside. On this one, it is way better than this one. The wires inside this one are still a little bit too long here from what I would like. On the production unit, we're gonna make it shorter, really make sure that everything fits like perfectly and you don't have a nest of wire, but already way better and the waterproofing as well. The other thing that you cannot see that is located under the scooter is this heat dissipation plate. So before we had the controller sticking out directly the body here, which is fine, but it's not ideal 
obviously for waterproofing and we realized that because the casing of the controller is painted and not anodized and it's this way because it was too hard to control the anodization of this case the heat dissipation was not optimal it is better to have the controllers stuck to the frame with thermal paste and put a heat dissipation plate like this on the frame with thermal paste in between that is anodized to really have all the heat dissipate and if we look at the old one for comparison it was like this so it looks better uh, it performs better as well uh, and it's going to be better for waterproofing and everything that goes with it including manufacturing as well so now we're going to look at the lights of the scooter one of the best part about it to turn it on i can simply press on the power button and then it's going to ask me for the nfc card in the final version you won't need the nfc to turn it on right now in the beta production we have a big card like this fit in the wallet and a small card like this in the final production it's most likely going to be two of the small one just because it performs way better. And you can add a new NFC card that you're gonna buy on Amazon or, or wherever you want directly to the scooter. So you don't even need to use our NFC card. If you lose it or whatever, you can register a new one. Obviously the scooter need to be unlocked for you to be able to register a new NFC card. So now that the scooter is on, I'm gonna turn on the light. So look at those beautiful lights all around the body. Again, you can see the red here is a lot darker. It looks better than what we had on this one. Just a diffusion of it, you know, you cannot see any LED or whatever under it. Uh, and the waterproofness, you know, this plastic finish is phenomenal. We made a lot of progress on waterproofing those crazy LEDs, which is a real challenge. Then if we look at the stem, you can see same beautiful finish here, consistent, still extremely bright. And what is nice on this one versus the Pro, is that you can turn all of them off with two click on the M button and it's independent from the headlight. So you can turn just the body lights or you can turn just the headlight on if you want. And the headlight is extremely bright as well. This is by far the brightest headlight we ever had and you can adjust the height to a really decent height as well. It's either completely uh, flush with the scooter or all the way up to like basically the wheel and we added some uh, silicone uh, at the back as well to waterproof the entry there. If we look at the V2 you can see that uh, the red here is just a little bit different than what we have on the final one so you can see here is a little bit more pinkish versus the dark red that we have here. Lastly, the difference is the battery pack itself. So on the beta production and on the official production, we use a metal casing around the battery, which is better for the heat dissipation, but also we're able to add fireproof gel inside that you can see in this clip. In case of a thermal event, it's gonna be helping tremendously and hopefully containing the fire within the battery. Again, this gel coupled with the UL2271 and 2272 and all the crazy certification we do uh, can offer you a peace of mind about the safety of the scooter itself. So where are we at with the development of the scooter? Right now we made 40 pieces. 20 pieces gonna be used for certification and rig testing. And the other 21 pieces to be exact are out there to be tested by real beta testers. And they are being tested at this very moment. The goal is to put 500 to 1000 kilometers within one month on those scooters and really nail all the final little imperfection of this scooter. So when we do the final production, the one that you pre-ordered if you watch this video, uh, it's gonna be perfect. So there's gonna be one last video that we show you probably when I'm in China of the production of this scooter to show you all the improvement, if any, that were done on it. But right now it's pretty stable and pretty solid. We are more than happy with the result. Again, let us know down in the comment below if you think there's something we should add. So stay tuned and see you in the next video. Thank you.